Astrophysics has a bad rap, sure. People have heard of Albert Einstein, the theory of relativity, black holes, and Stephen Hawking. But most folks have no real grasp of the science behind any of this. Christoph Galfard is on a mission to change that. On page one of his book, The Universe in Your Hand, he boldly proclaims his goal is to leave no reader behind as he dives into the mysteries of time and space, atoms and stars. Well, Christoph Galfard is a physicist turned science writer, and he holds a PhD in theoretical physics from Cambridge University, and is himself a former student of Stephen Hawking. He wrote much of this book here in Brooklyn, and he's back in New York this week to give a lecture at the Albertine tonight at 7 p.m. on the Upper East Side. Christoph Galfard, welcome to BK Live. Thank you very much. So so Greg and I have been poring over this book for the last few days. We've gotten into a lot of arguments about the theories imparted in it. But I wonder from you, what do you really want people to take away from this light summer reading? Well, that first of all, physics is not that difficult. Obviously, the mathematics that are behind are quite hard. Mm -hmm. They, you don't even understand a single thing if you look an, at an equation. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a story behind. And uh, as Stephen Hawking once said, once a theory works, mm. people should find ways to explain that to the general public, to turn it into a story in, 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 in a way. And it's just, we're all able to understand stories, to follow them and to, to dream thanks to stories. I believe that the, the science we have today, the science we've discovered in the last decade or last century, even yesterday, let's say, that, that's part of our human culture, mm -hmm. and it belongs to everyone, it's free, well, <laughs> you have to buy the book, but <laughs> it's basically free, but it's something that is shared by all the institutions on Earth, and, uh, and it makes you feel good to understand more about it. Yeah, and I admire this mission of yours to make science accessible to everyone. Let me challenge you on that, though. How do you explain the theory of relativity to me and Brian, for example? Mostly to him, I think. <laughs> can I can, just, just say, be, before you said that he went into music to, uh, to, to get some girls, can I say that I went into astrophysics to get some girls <laughs> as well? <laughs> it's the first sure. lie on the show today. <laughs> so, general relativity, okay, let's try that. Um, Imagine you're in outer space, okay? There is the Earth right in front of you. There, big ball spinning in outer space. And you want to understand what gravitation is about. Right now, if you're not flying off your chair, it's because there is gravity, okay? But what is gravity? Is there a rope that holds you down on Earth? No. Is there a rope that keeps this, the moon close to the Earth? No, there's something else. What? Let's try and get rid of the Earth. So you're in outer space. You get rid of the Earth, there's nothing left, okay? What if gravity was hidden somewhere in, in that nothing that's left? Interesting. That's what some guy thought uh, about, about 100 years ago. Crazy guy. He thought, okay, why not imagine that this something that's left, gravity lies in there. And let's imagine that we could somehow bend that emptiness that's left. So if we put, put back the Earth in the picture, mm -hmm. it should somehow bend that emptiness that's there, a bit like a, a, a heavy ball on a, on a rubber that, that you would put on a rubber. The rubber would bend around. With this picture, you bend everything around you in all directions, not just underneath. Why not? You don't have a clue what gravity is about. You can have all the fancy ideas that, that you want. Mm -hmm. So he tried that. He put back the moon in the picture and spinned it around the Earth, and it worked. Just with the bending, if you send a marble, it would turn in a salad bowl or something. Right. The, the, the moon would spin the right way around the Earth. I think I got it. As long as there are no follow-up questions, I think <laughs> I got it. That emptiness has been called space-time. The fact that it's bent mm -hmm. is what creates gravity, and that's the essence of what general relativity is about. And by the way, the crazy guy who had this idea, I, you may have heard of him before. It's uh, Albert. Yeah. Albert Einstein. <laughs> That's him. What brought you into the, the you know, passion of yours to make science accessible to everyone and write this book that you've written? I think it's important. Um, we live in a time where, when it's important for people to understand what's going on around. Uh, one thing, ask a child at night, a scared child at night in his bed, it's dark in his room, he's so, he's so monster somehow, yeah. somewhere. What do you do? You switch on the light. There's no monster. It's the same about science. You don't know what's happening in outer space, you're scared, 
afraid about it. Yeah, if we enlighten ourselves, we no longer have that fear, right? That's right. That's what I believe. So yeah. you work in theoretical physics, and you mentioned Albert, who came about at a time where we didn't have these supercomputers or even computing in the palm of our hands. How has technology changed that entire field? Like, what do you think would have happened if Albert Einstein was up against Watson or had Google at his disposal? Not much. Not much. No. Uh, <laughs> even though Go players can be scared for their future, <laughs> theoretical physicists still have the some time. The, the, the reason is that it's within the equations we have, mm -hmm. you can have a computer work out solutions, work out uh, approximations, yes, even simulations so that you can visualize something that has been abstract for, since forever. But to figure out a new theory, to mm -hmm. figure out something that ha was not known before, something you can't feed to a computer, no, we need humans. Interesting. Okay, yeah. so if, uh, I have so many questions. You're going to read from your book. First of all, you're a protege of Stephen Hawking. What are your favorite anecdotes of working with Mr. Hawking? What is Stephen Hawking What's like? What's he really like? Come on. <laughs> okay. Brian and I want to know. <laughs> I don't know. He, he, he's, an, uh, he's an amazing guy. Did you know that? <laughs> He's a smart guy too, right? Yeah, but in the movie you don't have that much of, of, about science. Yeah, I mean, it's really more about his life. Right. So let me give you an example. Um, first time I came to the U.S. with him, we, we used to spend about six weeks. He, he, he may still do, but um, he brought his students with him to Caltech in California, in Pasadena, mm -hmm. every year. And uh, the first time we arrived there, it was, we, we had a long travel, leaving his house at about four o'clock in. UK time in the morning, 4 a.m., mm -hmm. arriving here, uh, arriving in LA about, uh, I don't know, 24 hours <laughs> later, having a quick bite. We all wanted to go to bed and, uh, and sleep, and Stephen said, let's go party. No way, so you party <laughs> with Stephen Hawking. How does that well, go down? Is he talking to you through his computer the whole time? And yeah, he likes, he, likes to, he likes music, he likes to, to have a good dinner, he likes to, he's a, he's a happy man. He's there you a, go, yeah. BK Live exclusive. <laughs> Stephen Hawking likes to party. Well, the next time you're in Brooklyn, stop by. We've always got a party here. <laughs> he's a normal man, you know, he's a, in, in that sense. Well, he's a normal man, but on the in scale of <laughs> Stephen Hawking all the way to some elected officials who don't even believe in climate climate change or people who are fighting to say the earth is flat, the moon landing was a conspiracy. There's so, work to do. <laughs> well, in this environment, how do you see a book like Universe in Your Hand fitting into that landscape? That, that may go back to your first question. Um, the fact that science is hard, mm -hmm. that there is a language you need years to, to understand and to, to be able to use, uh, popular science books like this one and, and many others they, they're good mm -hmm. for that because it shows you, it tells you that it is not difficult to understand. If people tell you, you won't never get it, don't <laughs> listen to these people. It's yeah. not true, it's just that they can't tell the story. And uh, since everything, as I said before, can be translated in a story, into a story, that's what I truly believe, I'm, I'm, it's just, I don't know, some, some, some people just don't want to listen either. Well, speaking of listening, why don't you convince us a little <laughs> bit? We'll try to right the scales, all of you flat earth folks out there. Get Let's a hear a little bit from this. the book, yeah. The Universe in Your Hand. Right, so that gives you an example of what, what, what's going on in there. And the, 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 the paragraph starts with, the, now, how big is the visible universe? What would happen if you were to shoot straight out into what can be seen for as long as is possible? Is there a limit to it all? Well, since someone is sooner or later bound to ask you that once you're reunited with your buddy, you'd better try to figure it out. So, you travel, you travel. Mm -hmm. Here and there, you're in outer space now. Here and there, you see galaxies colliding. You see stars burst into superstars, supernovae, outshining billions of their siblings for about the wink of an eye. Throughout the universe, everything moves around everything. You are being blessed by a show of amazing proportions and inhuman beauties. Heading forward without looking back, you are now 10 billion light years away from Earth. Your mind keeps flying ahead and away. You are 11 billion light years away from Earth. 12, 13 billion light years away and counting. I'll stop there, but you'll find something funny. Wow, it's at the enlightening. End of that and it, you know, it shows how science can give people perspective on the universe, obviously, right? And there is one thing, although the, the science may be complex and although the universe might be huge, we have one tool to travel all around the universe we know, and that's our minds. Yeah. We can't 
we can reach places that no spaceship will ever reach. We can, our imagination is able to travel faster than light, yeah. to, to, to get you on the other side of the universe in, a, in the week of an eye. You can do that. And so the whole book is a, a mind journey into, the, into modern knowledge. That's excellent. Well, the book is The Universe in Your Hand. Christoph, thank you very much for being here. People can find the book on the web, I'm sure. And you're giving a lecture tonight. Whereabouts? That's right, at Albertine. That's a bookshop on Fifth Avenue. And it, um, the, the first 15 minutes will, will be uh, a visual travel into awesome. our... Uh, Neighborhood. Have you ever universe. seen this Big Bang Theory on of course. TV? <laughs> Stephen was, uh, Professor Hawking was on it, so yeah, obviously I had to learn what that was. <laughs> 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 Professor Hawking, tell, give him our regards, please. Christoph, thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate it and congratulations on the book. Thank you. It's spectacular. Thank you for enlightening us, enlightening a generation.